Hi, Matt McKay here, and today I'm going to talk to you about XLR connectors. Uh, XLR connectors are used for pro audio gear, uh, digital audio, uh, DMX lighting. Uh, they're present on all kinds of equipment. Uh, we use XLRs on uh, microphone connections. Uh, we use them on mixers. and all kinds of other stuff. Um, most importantly, uh, I will show you how to take apart the different types of XLR connectors that you're going to encounter, and we will go into a little bit of the, uh, the history behind them, how they work, uh, in an effort to familiarize yourself with the connectors um, so you can make repairs and make your own cables and just basically know, know how to deal with these uh, industry standard connectors. Uh, so I hope you enjoy it. Canon of Canon Electric which is now called ITT Canon. It started around the 1930s, 1940s, uh, began with the O-series connection, went to the Type P connector series. Each time they went on, they improved the connector. The Canon connector in the 50s was the UA connector series, uh, very similar using three pins, uh, but it did use a squared off, almost oval type of connector. Precursor to the XLR was the Type X connector, which is very similar to the one that we see today, but it did not have a latching mechanism. Followed by the XL connector series. And finally, the XLR connector series. And this is the same type of system that we use today uh, with locking mechanisms, male and female plugs. Uh, these are knockoffs. Uh, you're going to find um, offs of, of all of the major brands. Um, uh, of course, uh, as, as we mentioned, that Canon was the original brand, uh, followed by Switchcraft, and uh, Nutrik also makes a brand, and we'll, we'll cover all three of those. Uh, but this is the design of the original Canon uh, XLR connector. You know, all the XLR connectors consist of male and female plugs. Uh, the male plugs have visible pins right here, and the, uh, the females have the recessed holes. Now the advantage of this design is that multiple cables can be daisy chained together and there's never a question as to which is the input and which is the output. Uh, so you can make as long a cable as you like with any kind of XLR connector and they're all interchangeable despite brand. And um, in all XLR systems, male plugs are used for outputs and females are used for inputs. Uh, so to give you a quick example, um, microphones will have uh, male XLR connectors connected to them, um, and that is the output. Uh, we're going input to the to the female XLR connector, and this therefore becomes our output once again on the, on the cable end, and this goes into the female connector onto the mixer. So it's always input, output, input, output. All audio systems are the same. And all you need um, for, for this, this type of connector is a uh, Phillips head screwdriver. Uh, now the cannons uh, are an old design and they're kind of a pain to get, get apart, uh, but basically we're going to take these screws out of the strain relief. This is the male connector right now, female is exactly the same way. Just back out the strain relief screws. and put those aside. This one's being a little stubborn. There we go. So what we end up is, uh, is with the top collar, which acts as, as part of the strain relief. Now we're going to get into the terminal. We're going to back up this other Phillips screwdriver, uh, Phillips screw, and put that aside. That's a little shorter than, than the others. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to slide this rubber strain relief back off of the cable. Now we're able to push the wiring terminal of the connector through the plug. and now we get to see the inside of the plug. Now if you notice there's a bare wire. Bare wire is always connected to the 
to pin one to see on this, but it is marked. And then we have our uh, pin two, which is going to be for the um, uh, for the positive, and pin three for the negative. Now it doesn't really matter w what color the wires are when you're making cables, as long as uh, the pin one is always the shield and it ends up that way on the other side of the cable. Uh, pin two is always a single color, in this case it's white, and that ends up being on pin two on the opposite end. And in this case, pin three is red, and that's going to end up on pin three of the opposite end of the cable. Okay, so to reassemble, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to line up the screw holes. There's also a ridge right here that's going to fit inside the metal connector, and that's what messed me up a little bit in the first place. These inexpensive connectors are not engineered very to very high tolerances. Okay, there we go. And then we have to line up that screw hole. Insert our retaining screw once again. We're going to slide our strain relief back into position. That's going to fit right where that collar opening is. Reinstall the collar. And put those collar screws back in place. Don't tighten one side too much until you get the other one in there. Then you can tighten them down. There we go. And the, uh, the female end uh, works exactly the same way. Um, you do have your, your little clip in here, but that's going to fit right inside its slot. Again, you have the collar with the two screws. Uh, you're going to unscrew that uh, center screw there uh, to get the connector um, box out. And uh, again, you, you would pull out the strain relief. So that's the Canon. That's the most complex of, of the ones that we'll cover. The next one, and um, I, I, I like these very much. Um, they're a little bit easier to get apart. Uh, we're going to take a female end apart. These are Switchcraft designs. Switchcraft ma makes a, a few different um, types of designs, but this, this one seems to be uh, the predominant type used on most modern cables. And basically all you do is the undo the screw of the connector block. and that pulls itself right in. I mean right out of the connector. Okay, you do have your shield guard here, which is uh, on older um, connectors, it's going to be made of cardboard. Um, and the newer ones, it's going to be made of some sort of neoprene rubber. And you can see the terminals here. Again, we have pin one, which is our bare wire. Uh, we have pin two, which is our positive, and pin three, which are, is our negative. Uh, now this one does not require an external strain relief because you do have one built in here. Now when these come in raw form, uh, these um, clamps are going to be open up, opened up. So what you're going to do is you're going to solder your connections, you're going to crimp that closed, uh, make your solder connections, slide that little bit there, and put the connector back together. And these are engineered very nicely, so they fit together easily. And just slides right in. And then we reinsert our connector block screw.
That's exactly the same for the male. These are easy, so I will do this one. There we are. A little insulator pieces stuck inside there, but that uh, a little bit of shaking, something there it is. It's poking itself through. If you ever lose this, you can always uh, wrap a little piece of electrical tape around there. And again, we have our crimped screen relief, and here are our um, connections right here. Okay, again, you can have a little notch on the connector block, and you can match that up with the screw hole. Insert it as far as it can go, match up the screw hole. Tighten that back up. You don't need to really tighten these too too much. Just make sure that they're snug and hand tight because you don't want to strip out the screws because you'll never get them back out again. Now the newest type of XLR is made out of out of um, Europe from the Nutrik Corporation, and these are great. And uh, at first glance. People are really confused as to get these apart because there are no screws, which is kind of a nice thing. All you do is just take off the hood, which just unscrews, pull the hood back, and the whole assembly is going to come loose from the, from the housing. Now here's our connector block. Now what's cool about the new tricks is that they use this it's called a chuck, which crimps the wire down, and that forms the strain relief uh, once the hood is screwed back on. And again, we have our three connectors, our bare wire to pin one, uh, pin two, and pin three. And again, those are stamped on the, on the front there, although you may not be able to see it. Okay, reassembly is exactly the same way. Uh, the chuck can be a little tricky at first. Uh, you do have a split in it, uh, so it fits right over the cable. Fit that right around. And just kind of wrap snugly around there. We insert the entire thing into the housing. And you can see how the chuck is pointing out there. And what this is going to do is that's going to tighten that chuck up against the cable and form a strain relief. And that's great. And these are, require no tools. Um, the mail is the exact, exact same way. Okay, pull it right out. Find the split in the chuck, take that right off, and here you go. And you can see how effective that that little plastic chuck is at forming the strain relief because you do have these crimped edges here. And Nutrik makes a very, very high quality product. Okay, so put the chuck back on, slip this back into the housing. It only goes in the housing one way. There's going to be a little ridged area. Okay, and it will only go in a certain amount. Okay, so those are the Nutra connectors. So once again, this is Matt McKay, and I hope you enjoyed this video and you have a little bit of, of a better understanding of XLR connectors, how they work, and more, most importantly, how to deal with them when uh, repairs are needed. Uh, so this is Matt McKay signing out, and we'll see you next time.